white, snowy morning. <laughs> so my name is a Amanda, and I will be your host this morning. Our hope is that uh, in some way that you and your family are blessed today. Our mission here at Community Life Church is to help people to know God, find purpose, and experience life. And we want that for you just as much as we want that for your children and your teenagers. Uh, so everything that we do here at Community Life Church centers around that one key mission, to know God, to find purpose and experience life. And so if you are our guest here this morning, welcome. We are so glad you were here, whether, whether that's here this morning and you braved the first snowfall or whether you are joining us online either way. So um, if you are watching online, welcome. Good to have you with us. Uh, we hope that soon you can join us in person. So um, as if you are our first time guest, we do have a connect card in the seat back pocket in front of you, or you can um, get on our website and let us know that you are here and with us. I promise you, as I always say, we are not selling your information. Um, it is a way that we get to connect with you and let you know what's going on um, here at Community Life Church. And you can also do that through our app. So you can download the app and get that as well. So we do believe that everything that we have is from God. Everything that we have is from him. And he is such a blessing in our life. And I want to ask you, like, we just went through Thanksgiving, and now we are full throttle right into the Christmas season. It's like there's no break. No rest for the weary. Let's just go. We, we started back in March, I feel like. like <laughs> it was like talking about Christmas. But as we have, some of you have probably purchased all of your gifts. Some of you have probably like, wait, what? What's happening? I, am I in charge of that this year? <laughs> so regardless of the area, sometimes we start to get around the holidays just gift focused. Don't we? We start to just focus on the gift. Um, and so I want to take a moment and actually look at the scripture. Proverbs eighteen sixteen. it says, A gift opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great. So a gift opens the way, uh, opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great. This is a pretty big principle. If you look at the world around us, you can get pretty far in life by knowing how to give gifts and the right ones. Let's look at politicians, right? Sometimes you can be like, how did you get there, right? It can just be like this whole anomaly to try to figure it out. Or even in the corporate world, you can be like, how did they become a COO? Like, they are not here. They have no idea what's happening, right? And so sometimes people can get promoted and become in positions because they know how to give gifts. But I think about the principle behind that gift. When we give a gift to God, it's not the physical, it's not the money that we're getting, giving in order to get something in return. There's a heart issue that's at play. And I think God modeled it so beautifully to us. By giving the greatest gift of all, by giving his son, Jesus Christ, for us. I can't even imagine as a parent how difficult that would be to no longer have your son with you and to give him for this creation that you know is going to reject him and beat him and hurt him. And, and to think that God still chose to do that for you so that he could know you. And when we give a gift to God, this physical gift of, of giving money, there's more to it than that in our tithe and our offering. It's a heart worship unto God. And when we give that heart worship, we become in the moment in the presence of the great. We get to know him greater and be with him. And all the blessings that come with that of knowing Jesus Christ and knowing our Savior. So as you are Christmas shopping throughout the year, and as you are preparing your tithe and offering, whether that is through the offering envelope in front of you, whether that is through the Simple Give app, 
But as you're preparing that offering, I want you to line up your heart that as I give, this isn't just a physical act of me giving money to God. This is worship because, God, you gave your son the greatest gift. And so I give back a gift back to you. I give you my life. I give you my heart. I surrender everything to you, including my finances. I surrender it and I give it to you. And as I do, do it in faith that as you do, that you get to be before in the presence of the great, the great almighty. How powerful is that? So I'm going to go ahead and pray over that offering. God, I just thank you that as we give a simple gift, but a gift from our heart, I thank you that we get to be in your presence, worshiping the great I am, our counselor, the prince of peace, our savior. Thank you for being our greatest gift. And as we give to you, I thank you that you meet every need that we have. And I pray that throughout this holiday season that we would not be wrapped up in physical gifts, but the greatest gift of all, you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so this week we have prayer on Tuesday and Wednesday. I want to encourage you to come out to one of those times, Tuesday morning at 1030, Wednesday evening at 7. Make it a priority to attend one of those and to truly take the time to make Jesus the reason for the season. <laughs> It's so cliche sometimes to say it, right, because it kind of just rolls off the tongue and people say it with no real meaning behind it. But truly take the time to make him first. Find ways to, to slow down and make time for him because he is the reason that we celebrate it in the first place. So, um, and as we were talking about Christmas, our Christmas Eve service so that you can make plans will be at 6 o'clock. To seven, it'll be a one hour service. It will be a family service. So you can have your kids and your teens and, and all with you. Um, it's always a wonderful time to be able to do it with the family and worship together um, for that one hour service. And then Sunday, the 26th, we will not be having service. Okay? So come on Christmas Eve, no service on Sunday. Spend that time with your family um, and you can watch a message on YouTube that Sunday morning together. You can watch an adult one. You can watch a kid one. You can do both. Whatever floats your boat. <laughs> all right. And then I just want to say thank you so much for all that gave for Operation Christmas Child. We had 53 shoeboxes <laughs> that we were able to donate. And I, wanna, I just want to say with our same scripture for offering, we gave a gift. And as the people who get to hand out these gifts, they can get to um, speak to each one of these children, provide a need for them. They feed them, they give them these beautiful gifts, and then they get to teach them about their Lord and Savior, the hope of the world. And so thank you for being a part of that and bringing a smile to these kids' faces. And Pastor Steve and Mamie, would you guys like to come up and we'll prepare our hearts to receive. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, love that snow. We hope that you all Wait have a, a second. I know. You got no cheers on that one. <laughs> Did you really think you would get... Well, somebody. Oh, some, some snow lovers. Yeah. Yes. I'm looking forward. I, I think this week it says it's going to be 50 one of those days. Coming up, right? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Boo. Well, I hope you had a nice Thanksgiving, yes. a time to relax a little bit. Like Amanda said, it seems like everything can just be rush, rush, rush. But we pray and hope that you had a nice Thanksgiving with family and with friends. And um, if you brought your Bible with you, we hope that you did. Turn yeah. to uh, Revelation chapter 7. Turn with me there. Turn with us there. And Revelation chapter 7. We'll have some scripture up on PowerPoint. Some we'll have to just look up in our Bible. Hallelujah. Yeah. So Amen. let's just pray before we begin. Father, um, we're here in your presence, Lord. Worship was awesome. Yes. And our desire, Father, is to know you more. This is why we gather together, not just for information. We want revelation, yes. Lord, of your heart and who you are and Jesus, everything that you've done for us. We can sometimes hear these words over and over, but I pray, Lord, 
you help, by the power of the Holy Spirit, they penetrate our heart deeper today. Speak to our hearts. I pray that as Pastor Stephen and I speak, that we would decrease, that your voice, Lord, would increase in the ears of the hearers. And Lord, again, I, I remind uh, ourselves that it's not just the hearers, but we need to be doers of your word to help us, Lord, to be doers and obey the things that we hear your voice speaking to us yes. this morning, because in our obedience, your promises will be blessed. And so we thank you, Father, that we can gather together this morning in your name. Amen. Amen. All right, so we are wanting to share with you a message today about the importance of worship, what we just got done doing. Mm -hmm. Worship. And we want to close out the message today. We're, we're banking on having enough time to do this with some worship so we could practice what we've been preaching, <laughs> I guess. But truly, our, our great desire as pastors is that our church would grow in passion for worship mm -hmm. of God. When we gather together, that we would consider this a very important part, like what we were just doing, worshiping God together. And just w our life would be a worship to God. And, and like Amanda was saying, the Christmas season is upon us. It's the time when we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. We consider all the wonders of his person, everything that he's done for us. We need to pause and think about all these things Wonderful things that his salvation has brought to us in our life. That he would humble himself the way he did. Leave heaven. Come to earth. A broken, sin-stained earth. Become one with us. Enter into our humanity. Take on such a lowly estate. Be born in a manger. He, he's God. Yes. And live a selfless life. Okay, a selfless life and then... Be destined to die a brutal death on the cross, bearing the weight of the sin of the world. Why did he do that? He did it so that we could be welcomed back into his family. Hallelujah. So that we could know him, so that we could have eternal life. Eternal life is a gift, and without Jesus coming as that gift, we would not know it. Every single one of us would be lost and dead in our sin because his sacrificial death Without his sacrificial death, I should say, we would all have been condemned under the weight of our sin. And the scripture says, if we die dead under the weight of our sin, Jeez. we're forever lost, separated from the joy of his presence, of knowing his presence, of which we can partake of some now yes. before we reach that place. And so when we think of all the things that he's done for us, and we do need to ponder these things, Pray about them. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal them deeper to our heart as we, as we consider them all. We'll worship him. Yes. We're going to worship him for the ages to come, for billions of years, for all eternity. However long our finite minds now can <laughs> even understand that. We're going to worship him for the wonderful gift of salvation and his love and his forgiveness and his grace alone oh. that saved us, that he gave to us. And I think to myself, what will that worship look like? What will it sound like? Well, this is why I had you turn to Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7 gives us a little glimpse of what the worship of God will be like. And it says this, Revelation 7 verse 9, And after these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations and tribes, peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, yeah. saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and they worshiped God saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God to the ages and ages throughout all eternity. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Can you get a picture of what <laughs> that would look like and sound like? A multitude of saints of all ethnicity, all race, coming together, worshiping together, crying out together in thanksgiving for our salvation. 
that we've been made one with him. So think about it. Worship in heaven, when we read this, is not just some quiet little private affair. <laughs> it's holy, and it's expressive, yes. and it's real, and it's open. And everyone and everything is participating in the life of God. Like, it's as though we're all going to be drawing upon his life, and we just can't, even if with immortal bodies, we won't be able to contain it. It'll yeah. all just exude back to him, for from him and to <laughs> him and through him, Scripture says, are all things. And so we'll just be overcome with thankfulness for everything that he's done for us and that he welcomed us to be a part yes. of his plan, that he welcomed us, adopted us back into his family. And so knowing this now, isn't it awesome that we can know this now? Yes. Knowing this now that we are welcomed, we are loved, that sin is behind us, the grave is yeah. behind us, death is behind us. And this is our future. Amen. And this is our future. Come on. Doesn't it become easier? It should become easier, especially when we gather together and we sing these kinds of songs that we just Release ourselves into his presence. Yes. And tell him with words that just come from our own heart how wonderful he is. Oh, thank you, Jesus, that I don't have to spend eternity apart from you. Thank you that forever and ever and ever, for the ages to come, we'll be understanding your goodness and your grace. We can do that. We really ought to do that. Yeah, come on now. <laughs> We, ha we must acclimate our hearts to this now because this is where we're going. Amen. Right? Hallelujah. <laughs> this kind of worship is now. It, this kind of worship is happening right now. John the Apostle was called up into heaven and he witnessed these things. And that was 2,000 years ago. That's happening yeah. now. And we can become a part of it here on this planet before we come to see him face to face. Now, Jesus said this. If you remember, Jesus was uh, going to the well of Samaria. And he met this woman. And they were talking. And he kind of kind of cornered her. And so she started to talk about worshiping God. And this is what he said. He said, you know, she says, well, you Jews said you got to worship in, in Jerusalem. We said we could worship on this mountain. And this was Jesus' answer to her question. And it's found in John chapter 4. If you want to quickly turn there, John chapter 4, verse 23. This is Jesus speaking, but he's speaking to us also. You know, his words are forever settled in heaven. And when we're in heaven, we are going to be looking at his word. We're going to be reading his word. Jesus says this when the question was, where are we supposed to worship who, when, where. Jesus says this. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. The Father is seeking. He's looking all over this world, looking for people. He's looking for people who are going to be worshiping him in spirit and in truth. Those are the qualifications. Worship him in spirit and truth. It didn't say if you have great harmonies. It didn't say if you could play the <laughs> instrument great. It didn't say if you're a great communicator or the biggest influencer or the richest or you have the most followers on Instagram. No, he says the Father is searching for true worshipers. I think what happens a lot of times is we see this word worship and we think just, we think, oh, it's the first part of the service. Three songs, that's it, that's worship. But the, the Greek word that defines worship has to do with your whole being, spirit, soul, and body. It, it has a meaning of bowing down. Bowing down, kneeling, has a meaning of lifting your hands and worshiping. It has a meaning of laying prostrate. You know what that indicates? That you're powerless. Mm -hmm. I'm powerless. 
we're worshiping the one who has all power and is wanting to help us walk in his ways. Once again, it's not just we sing these three songs, that's worship. All right, that's over. Now we're going to hear the word. No, but it's, it has to do with your physical body, and it has to do, of course, with your spirit, your heart. And it's easier for us to do it when we truly submit and honor the Lord and give him the honor. When we submit our lives to him, when we meditate about what he really has done, the importance of worship to God for a Christian, it's huge. It's huge. It matters. Worship matters to God. And believe it or not, it matters to you. Yeah. Because the more you understand, the more you open your heart up to worship God, just because He is worthy of it, it changes your heart. Yeah, it does. It will change your heart. It does. And I think sometimes we, we, we get it mixed up because people yeah. will often say, well, I, I don't feel God. He doesn't seem real to me. Or, you know, I, I wish I felt him more. And I think that's a very common, mm -hmm. uh, those are common statements. We've all said that before, right? Yeah. And, and when we say that, there's a tendency then to just hold our heart back. We're waiting for something more to happen. And then when I, I guess I feel him more, then I'll respond more. And so we've got this holding back going on. If God doesn't move, then I don't move. But see, the thing is, something has already come, happened. Come on. <laughs> in the spirit, something has already happened. Yes. He's made himself known to us through the word of God. And his word says, I'm with you always. Behold, you know, I'll never leave you or forsake yeah. you. No, never. So he's here with us now. Right. He's here. If you're a believer, he's here. He's right there. He's in you. And he's beside you because if there's a believer sitting beside you, Come then on now. There we God's are. in you and beside you right now. Have you ever thought of it that way? Yes. <laughs> because his blood, think about it, he's already settled it. His blood has already been shed. Our sins have already been paid for. We're already justified. We've already been made righteous. Hallelujah. Right? By grace alone. Now he calls us beloved. Now, beloved, you are the sons and daughters of God. Mm. And so we've been blessed already, Scripture says, with every spiritual yes. blessing in the heavenly realm. And this is the, one of the keys. It's a spiritual blessing. And so we begin, first of all, to touch God in our spirit. We're waiting for our feelings to tell us something. When we could know in our spirit that yes. God is already here with us. Mm -hmm. And we respond from our heart according to what we already know. It doesn't really have to do with our feelings, right? He says, Jesus, well, it's Jesus is the word of God, but in the book of James, it says, draw nigh to God, and then what? He'll draw nigh to you. So see, the Lord has already done everything. He's already set the table. He's saying, come closer to me. You, yeah. you come to me. Draw nigh to me as though I'm here with you. And it's not as though he isn't. He is here with us. It's just that in the natural, we have a hard time and we want to always go by our feelings. But we must intentionally worship. That's the, really the path to yes. feeling his presence. When we intentionally put aside, I don't care if I don't feel anything. Mm -hmm. If scripture says he's with me now. And when one or two or more are gathered in his name, there he is Come on now. in our midst. He's here. The Holy Spirit's presence is here. Often it's a matter of how much we just want to open up our heart in faith to believe and partake. So whether we feel anything or not, the truth of the matter is God is worthy of worship all Come the on. time. Yes. He's, he's the king. And of course, this takes an attitude of humility in our own heart. It takes an attitude of faith yes. to set aside my self-focus, how I feel about it all. And really discipline your mind because our mind can really be, give us the biggest <laughs> trouble, can't it? Oh it can my. run in all kinds <laughs> of directions. And, and like Pastor C was saying that 
the meaning of the word worship is to bow down. It is. It's a bowing down in my heart. It's, I bow, I'm bowing down in my heart and purposely putting my focus on him. This is intentional. Yes. See, if you wait for a feeling like, oh, I just feel so good about this. I'm gonna, I'll bet you many of you came in here today, maybe you didn't feel like worshiping. You have other things on your mind. But when we understand we've come into the presence of the king, now we all stand. Yes. Now we all lift our hands because he's here. Something changes in the atmosphere That's so of our true. heart. And so I don't mean to sound cold, <laughs> but it, this is, worship is not really based on how you feel or you, whether you like it or you don't like it or your personal preferences. And right. sometimes it's like, well, I <laughs> wish we, we do like so, certain songs better than other songs. <laughs> but you can worship to any of these songs, the truth of the matter is. That's right. Because when we just want to seek him and the honor of him, we can, we can release our heart in his presence. You know, people say, well, I'm just not really into worship. Well, you're just telling on yourself right there. It, 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 you know, that's are, why I are. come late. <laughs> or I don't like this song, like you were just yeah, saying. I don't I like this song, so I'm not going to sing it. Or, you know, I, I, I just feel tired, so I'm just going to sit down and, and watch. I'm just going to watch. But those aren't the kind of worshipers God is seeking, is it? Yeah, and, yeah. You know, in that John chapter 4 scripture, he says, he, he, he puts these words in there, true worshipers. I think it would yeah. be good for us to understand, are, am I a true worshiper? Yeah. You know, uh, is it? I don't want to step on everybody's toes, but if you come in here and you sit down, and I'm just not into it, or I come late so I miss it, you know, are you a true worshiper? You know, there's a lot of things in the Bible that are really like the acid test. Mm -hmm. You know, and, the, and we're here to tell you, hey, the Holy Spirit is here to help you understand, wow, I need to change some stuff here, you know. <laughs> if we humble ourselves before him and we recognize what he's really done for us, mm -hmm. And we get our mind off ourselves. Yeah. That's a biggie. <laughs> that's that's everything. It's a biggie. Because it's how I feel. Yeah. I'm tired. I don't like that song. I, you know, they're off key. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Right? <We're> <laughs> Never. You know, worship is not about you. Yeah. It's not about you. No. Yeah. <laughs> We worship him because he's worthy. Yes. He's worthy. And the truth is, we're extremely needy people. Yeah. Uh, and if we worship him and we get our mind off of ourselves and we truly worship him, guess what he's going to do for you? He's going to bless you. Yeah. You know, when we worship him in spirit and truth, our heart is connecting one with him. Our hearts get changed. Yes. You know, is not everybody starts off in, in, in coming to church and just fired up about worship. But as you grow in these things, your heart does change. And worshiping God, worshiping Jesus, magnifying the Holy Spirit is fundamental to a faith-filled yes. life. Yes. It is fundamental about being led by the Spirit of God. Fundamental. You can't bypass it. You can't go around it. They are fundamental. And worship involves surrender. Yeah. Yeah. Just like what we said, you lay prostrate. Surrender. Romans chapter 12 is a great scripture for this. It says, Romans 12, 1, it says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Hmm. <laughs> Worship's a lifestyle. It isn't the three songs we sing. Yeah. It's a lifestyle. Yeah. And it's when we recognize him, when we honor him, it'll affect your life in every facet. Yeah. Everything. So it says to... Offer yourself as a living sacrifice. So God's not going to make us do it. 
correct. See, that's good. This is up to us. This yeah. is something intentional on our part. And of course, if we're going to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, someone has once said, you know, the problem with a living sacrifice is it's always wanting to crawl off the altar and <laughs> do its own thing. <laughs> we don't stay on the altar yeah. of yeah. submission and surrender. We just want to get up and have our own way, do our own thing. Mm -hmm. And when we think about honoring God, um, like with our whole life as a living sacrifice, that does affect everything we're doing yes. eventually. I mean, God doesn't deal with us all at once. Thank God he doesn't. Amen. We couldn't handle it. But little by little, you know, my thought life, he, as you read the word of God, he starts to show you about your own thought life. Like my thoughts are higher than yours. My ways are higher than yours. Mm -hmm. And we, we are to adopt and renew our mind to what who God says that yes. we are and then it begins to change our speech because we find ourselves saying things that are opposite of scripture <laughs> I hate myself my life is awful and meanwhile God says I have a good plan for your life and I've crowned you with with dignity and worth and so we start to we, we start to have to make these changes yes. in, in, as we worship God with our lifestyle like what I watch the social media I partake of yeah the, my friends my attitude, how I treat people, it just, his, his influence in our life begins to touch everything. My whole life becomes an act of worship to God. Totally. And, you know, sometimes we equate, like you said, worship to mean only singing and saying, right. well, I, I worship God today. I came in for 20 minutes. We sang three songs and worship's over. <laughs> <laughs> the worship isn't over. Amen. It's a lifestyle. I remember I had a plaque. We had this plaque in our dining room that said something to the effect of Jesus Christ is head of this house. He's the unseen guest yeah. at every meal. He's the silent listener to every conversation. And I love that plaque because I wanted Jesus to be head over our house. We prayed that way. And uh, these, we were new to the things of God at that time. But I would start to think, he's the unseen guest at every meal. So when we sit down together, when we say this prayer over our meal, this isn't just about, okay, hurry up, get through the prayer, because I, I really like, you know, that <laughs> meatloaf sitting there. I can't wait to get to it. Every, we, we would pray, and sometimes the kids would have their fork in their hand, like, ready to eat. Like, get the prayer done so I can get started. And we, like, put the, put the forks down. Yep. Put the glasses down. Yep. We're focused. He's the unseen guest here. He's here, and we're going to pray a prayer like we mean that he's yes, here. Yes, amen. It's amazing how these little things can change the atmosphere in your home, especially around your children. But again, sometimes we just equate worship not as a lifestyle to God, but we just we sang three songs and now we're done with worship. But and the truth of the matter is, we could come to church. We can sing those three songs even though we're gathered to people with people of like faith but we don't actually worship god even as we do it mm -hmm. because we're preoccupied Come we're on. distracted yeah we had maybe an argument with our spouse on the way to church and we didn't reconcile and so our mind is like we're still grinding over those thoughts it's hard to put our mind on worship isn't it mm. we can sing songs but not really in our heart worship him our lips are moving but yeah <laughs> we're somewhere else inside how many of us can say oh me or i can testify to that yeah and like you said we can end up watching it's like well i just don't feel like i keep my mind on it. and so we just sort of stand there and we watch other people we're watching the team the, the worship team play sing looking at how people are dressed whatever we're doing we're distracted mm -hmm. And, or you can just skip the whole thing. Like I said, not even arrive on time and just go, oops, I missed work. That's a vital part yeah. of the service. And so we can do a lot of things, come to church, we can do things for God, we can listen to sermons, we could even serve in a ministry area, but still not really be a worshiper. Well, that's true. You know, these things are good. These yeah. things are good to do. We should yeah. do them. You, but you, they can just become religious if we do yeah, them exactly right yeah. more for ourselves we could just do them because we feel like well, it's just the right thing to do but we're not really doing it in a wholehearted worship right it's it's, to God. it's convenience you know i'll be there if i if i if it works out for me and if i decide i don't i'm not coming 
you know, <laughs> and it depends on your priorities. What's the first commandment? To love the Lord your yeah. God with all your heart, all your strength, all your might. I mean, I think if, if we have that in the forefront of our mind, we're going to find ourselves repenting quite a bit. Because if I feel like it, I'll be there. If I don't, I won't. You know, again, you you made mention is people can do a lot of activity at church. And really, you can do all that activity and do it for yourself. You have to ask God to help me. Help me see my motivation here. Because he knows the motivation of your heart, even when we don't. Yeah. And so it's always important for us to say, Lord, I'm, I want to be a disciple. I want to be a true worshiper. I'm asking you to invade my life. I'm asking you to show me my motives. I want to do this properly. I want to be a true worshiper. You pray that prayer, he's going to answer that. He is. You know, we sing these songs, and yet again, we, we truly fail to worship God from our heart. You know, and honestly, if you start to ask the Holy Spirit to help you with that, you're going to be able to move into his presence in a deeper way. You're going to eventually, not saying that this is our goal, is to make me feel like God is here, but is to, the goal is exercising my faith, believing God is here, and I am going to worship him because he is worthy. Yeah. And, and really, worship is celebrating God for who he is. It's celebrating what he's done in your personal life. Yeah. I'll tell you, when we get to heaven, you're going to worship him like never before. Because all of a sudden, the veil is going to be turned back off of your eyes, and you're going to see what he has done for yeah, you. Right. We don't even know what it's like to be outside the presence of God. Because God is here. He is on this planet. He's moving. But you take the absence, you remove God, and it is going to be a disaster for anybody who's existing at that time. You know, you it's, know, it's... I want to just go back to something we're talking about. Uh, you know, sometimes the difficulty uh, of coming into the, into the presence of God like on a Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. And I've thought, think about ourselves... Uh, in having to come and minister the, the word of God. And, you know, it's very difficult to do if you've had an argument, say, with your spouse, and then you know you're going to have to stand up there and preach together. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> you can feel like a hypocrite. It's like, uh, and it's forced us over the years. Yes. Because uh, I just remember being taught some of this along the way in ministry that you really need to reconcile and make it right. You need to do, you need to yep. humble yourself, do whatever you need to do so that you can stand up, let's say for us, before people and feel like, I love you, honey. <laughs> <We're not. clears throat> but I think about how many times people come to church and they've had an argument on the way in or the kids are rowdy and everybody's screaming and it's like you're out the door and you're just, you walk in the building and say, hi. And <laughs> Meanwhile, like, you, you and your spouse look at each other like, two you know. different rooms, go to the two different spots. And I don't know. I don't have an easy solution. All I know is that reconciliation makes worship a whole lot easier. Amen. And so when we force ourselves, and there's a, there's a measure of humility, maybe in the car right before you open the door, it's like, God, like you yep. just take, own your part. Yes. I'm sorry for saying that, you know, let's just forgive me. And I whatever. forgive you. Okay. <laughs> And, but it makes a, <laughs> makes a huge difference. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? Yeah, right. <laughs> I looked away and I'm not sure what happened. Yet, but but I, I say that because I think we all struggle with that. Mm -hmm. We want to come into church and we can sometimes put on a happy face like, yeah, everything's fine. And it's not fine. But God wants to help mend yes. those places in our heart, but it takes humility, it takes honesty, and it takes a desire to reconcile and walk in forgiveness. And then the forgiveness that we've been given, we give, Amen. and it all starts to work full Amen. circle. And so I just wanted Amen. to Amen. That's that really good. Yeah. That's, if there's only one thing you get out of that today, that's it. 
because the Holy Spirit is going to help you do that transaction with each other. It's not easy, but yet it's a must. You must do it. You must do it. Let's take a look at uh, uh, Psalm 100, and it's verse 1, actually, Psalm 100. It's a, I'm sure that you've recognized the song because it's, this is where a lot of our songs, our well, worship songs come from. This could have come from it. Yes. The first line. Yes. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. He, it is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. I think one thing that a lot of people deal with is actually receiving God's love. Yeah. Thinking that you have to earn it or, or you have the devil sitting on your shoulder and you, he's reminding you of everything you've done wrong and every mistake you made. And then you come to, just like Pastor Mamie says, we start to talk the wrong thing, that I don't know how God can love me. And then we run that movie. Uh, I think this is something that we must do. We must accept the gift of God's love. Because it is a gift. Yeah. You don't earn it. He just loves you. It, it really is like the greatest absolute. Yes. That's a good one. Good yeah, way to in, say in our life. Like God's not going to love you more tomorrow See, this is good. than he does today. That, that thing blew my mind years ago when I heard that. It's like, what? So if I obey and I follow you and I do do all these things, you won't <laughs> love me more? <laughs> won't you show me more favor? His love is absolute. It's, all, it's poured out mm -hmm. for us. And Ephesians chapter 3 tells us, I mean, that was a prayer that Paul prayed. We've yes. mentioned it. We pray it often at our prayer meetings that, that, that we would know the love of God, the height and depth and breadth of the love of God and experience it. Experience because it. Because we need to experience that love in our heart. And if you struggle with this, and we all do, I don't know of any person who has just feels like, I know God loves me, maybe a few, but most struggle yeah. with feeling, as like I said, I don't feel God, the love of God, then pray this prayer yeah. in Ephesians, and we won't even, we're not going to pray it today, but it's Ephesians chapter 3, somewhere in there, verse 17 or so. I think so. Yeah, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. <laughs> Pray it for yourself, pray it for your children, or have your children read it yes. and pray it. Because this, these are spirit-led prayers mm -hmm. if we want to feel and know the love of God. And we have to, if we're going to be a worshiper, we have to accept his love. And, and in that sense, in our spirit, we feel his love, right? Correct. And I think there's lots of reasons why we push away from it. Just rejection things that happened in our life with people in authority could have been a parent could have been a teacher mm -hmm. could have been a boss somewhere along the way we develop insecurities about how we look what we have what we don't have we we, we have shameful thoughts you know things that maybe we did in the past that we still even though we've asked for forgiveness yeah it still brings up feelings of shame and so there's this sense of i don't can i really give my whole heart to him yeah. And the devil, like you said, builds on these lies. He'll take, you know, you, you take one lie, it's like he gives you a sledgehammer. Let's just hammer that thing in yeah. harder. You know, you feel insecure. Well, you know, you're awful. You're the worst person. And you mm -hmm. just, you can go around mixed up. It's like p picking, I've likened it to like picking petals off of a daisy. Some days you feel like God loves me. Yes. You remember we used to do that as a kid. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me. And you're hoping that last pedal is on. He loves me. <laughs> but it's like that with God. Today I feel good about things and I'm, my mind is able to stay on him. He loves me. And then the next day I wake up, I feel awful. You know, I'm worried about something. I feel bad about myself. You know, he loves me not. 
and we go on with the next day mm. is good. He loves me. The next day is bad. He loves me not. That's not how God is. Come on. God is absolute in his love. It's constant in his love. And we have to keep renewing our mind to this. We have to keep casting down imaginations that say otherwise. That's for sure. You know, because if, if we could just understand a little inkling of that love that he has for us, it gets so much easier than on. to release love to people <laughs> around you and love to God back to him. And I think some of the vision is that we've got to get out of our own way. Do you understand what I mean by that? we got to forget about ourselves. Unless we not. I, oh, yeah, that, you know. No, we need to get out of the way and put God, uh, how great a love he has for us in our heart and in our mind. We have to renew our minds to the truth of this because Jesus sees all your inadequacies, all your failures through the blood of his son. It says he'll remember your sins no more. So how does he see Jesus? How does he see Jesus? How does God the Father see Jesus? Perfect. Perfect. Blameless. You know, that's the same way he looks at you. Beautiful. Perfect. And when we open our hearts wide to this, you're going to recognize his presence. You're going to recognize the anointing. You're going to start to feel very close to him. And so you have to get rid of these worries. You have to, I mean, this whole series that we did before this, get rid of the worries. And, and that's easier said yeah. than done, isn't it? But you have to attack that. Here it is again. Yeah. Lord, I'll give it back over to you. No, when we start to get out of our own way in worship, yeah. the feelings will eventually come. Right. You have to train yourself. You have to renew your mind. Yeah. And by doing that, you're submitting to God and thinking the way he thinks about yeah. you. And you're honoring him. We yes. honor him. Yes. And, of course, this is all easy when times are good. <laughs> when we understand everything, how all the pieces of our life are fitting yep. together, everything looks like this perfect puzzle. It's like, oh, yeah, it's easy to worship. But what about when... Our circumstances don't make sense. And God doesn't make sense. Right. But what about when it's hard? See, worship also involves a personal sacrifice on our part. That's for sure. It's like when God tested Abraham. Think yeah. about that. That's Genesis 22. God says, take Isaac, your only son, the son you love, and I want you to offer him up. For a burnt offering and a sacrifice to me. Did it make sense? It made no sense. However, if you understand the scripture and as you study it out, it makes perfect sense because it's a covenant that we have with God. Because if Abraham wouldn't have done this, then God the Father couldn't have sent Jesus. This is how important it really is. So he goes, I love reading that because in verse 4, he immediately goes... But then it says, after three days, he found the mountain that he was supposed to sacrifice him on. Kind of sounds familiar. After three days, he rose again from the dead. And then in verse 5, it, it talks about, you know, uh, he tells his, his uh, slaves, he says, you guys wait here. The boy and I are going to go and worship, and then we'll be back. You see, worship has to do with sacrifice. And you can see Abraham's faith there, too. The boy and I will be back. He knew that he wasn't going to just end his son there. But you take a look at that. That is an extreme act of worship. And then another one about worship costs you something. David, because of his numbering the the people of Israel, a plague came. And so David was going to go and make a sacrifice to God to stop the plague. So he goes to Ornan's threshing floor and he says, I need to buy this so that I can make an offering to the Lord, which will stop the plague. And Ornan, you know, he loved David. He says, 
oh, just take the property and I'll give you the animals for the sacrifice. And David goes, I'm not going to offer God a sacrifice that didn't cost me anything. Mm, yeah. And so this is where it is. Worship definitely costs you something. Yeah. Yeah. It can cost you, well, get your mind off of yourself. Mm-hmm. I think that's, you know, yeah, we can always say, yeah, it costs you money too. Yeah, a sacrifice. We gave the boxes and that was a sacrifice. But yet the bigger sacrifice is get your mind off yourself. Yeah. And love God. And on to God. I mean, put yourself in the place of Paul and Silas. Here they are out preaching. This is in the book of Acts. And they're thrown in jail on the inner parts of the prison. It said they were beaten with many stripes. Their feet are in stocks. They're in chains. All right? And then they're worshiping God. It said at midnight. Yeah. You know, Paul and Silas sang sang praises to God so loud that the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, while they're worshiping, an earthquake hits the prison, and all the doors of the prison open, and all their chains fall off. Yeah. And the the jailer's thinking he's going to be killed because the prisoner's going to escape. So, but Paul, he's ready to kill himself. And Paul and Silas say, "No, you know, we're here." And they preach the gospel to them, to him, and they preach the gospel even to their whole family. It said got saved. So as they worship, think what they did in the midst. They were just beaten. Their backs were bloody. I'm sure they're in pain. Their feet are in stocks, and they're singing, how great is our God. It's like, it's a lesson for all of us, isn't it? Come on, yes. Because what do we do when we find ourselves in the midnight hour, so to speak, when it's dark, when the circumstances aren't good, Mm. when we feel like we are suffering, and it's not right? We have to make a decision. There you go. We see it in Scripture. We have the cloud of witnesses that have gone before us Come on. who have done this, that, that are examples for us to follow. We worship because our God is good. And our God still deserves. Yes. Uh, he deserves praise and glory. And in doing that, something shifts in the spiritual atmosphere. Come on. It shifts in our heart. It shifts in the heavenly. Yes. And very often you do see blessings coming in the mix, midst of that it's really extravagant worship Ooh, when it's dark and we worship nonetheless it says this in hebrews 13 15 through jesus therefore let us continually offer are. to god a sacrifice of praise the fruit of lips that openly profess his name so see it's a sacrifice of praise it costs us something of yes, ourself it costs us something and you have to do it in the hard times yeah. You, you, and that's something that we have to learn. It's getting your mind off yourself. And look, we all go through difficult times. And those are the difficult times that can make you walk away from God yeah. or draw closer to God. Yeah. And it's going to be dependent on you. And if we give that sacrifice of praise, we worship him. Just I love yeah. what you said. Is, is Extravagant worship extravagant results yeah. quickly tell that story about king david and king david as a matter of fact he uh, is a great example of it uh he had uh this child this was a story of Bathsheba, and it was not a good story uh, god said that uh, this child is not going to live uh, because it was sin and david immediately started to pray and ask for the child to be spared Fasted, prayed, fasted, prayed. The child ended up dying. And then you come to the place where after he prayed, what did he do? Does does anybody remember the story? I mean, first of all, I can't imagine the pain of that. Anybody who's lost a loved one, Mm -hmm. the pain of feeling that loss, especially of a child, the loss of a loved one is such a great thing to have to bear. But after the baby died, he you know, washed? the Bible tells yeah. us that he got up from the ground. Yeah, he washed, he put on lotions, it says. He changed his clothes, and what did he do? It says he went to the house of the Lord and worshipped. And worshipped. And worshipped. And it goes back to the thing. It could either drive you away or it could draw you closer. And you're, it's up to you. It's up to me. 
what are we going to do? We should move towards God yes. in our pain. He's the only one that can mend a broken heart. He's the only one who can heal and put back together and actually bring beauty from ashes. That's his promise. Yes. He's the, he's the mender of the brokenhearted. And so he longs for us. We're going we're gonna to sing a close out this, the uh, message today by worshiping. And as the worship team, go on up. And, yeah. you know, Jesus longs for us to draw near to him. And so we're going to do that now as we close out worship. The Holy Spirit has been speaking, I think, believe to all of our hearts. One thing that we can sometimes feel is like maybe we have nothing to offer God. Mm -hmm. You might feel empty. Nothing to offer, broken pieces, <laughs> broken lives. But this is the Lord is good at piecing our lives back together. He's, he just says, bring them to me in worship. Yeah. Just bring it to me in worship. We don't have to know anything else but that. Just have faith. Just come to him and worship because he's good, because he's God, because he loves us. And let him work a work in our lives as we take our mind off of ourselves, our problems, our pains, our sorrows, our insecurities, our failures, everything. Give it to him. Put it aside and just worship. I mean, God doesn't want what you think, you know, you're going to be, or well, when I'm this, then I can worship, or what I want to be. He just wants you. He wants your heart today. Yes. Everything, the good, the bad, the ugly. Will you give it to him? Will you just stand? Let's just stand in his presence and offer yourself, offer your heart to God. Let's go. The splendor Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light when darkness tries to hide and trembles at his.
never forsake us. You're always with us. We yield our minds, our hearts today that you start the training ground within us to worship and give you glory, to praise you with all that is within us in the difficulty and in the good. Holy Spirit, we yield ourselves to you to give you glory, Father, for you care for us. We worship you. We worship you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So our hope is that in some way you and your family have been blessed today, whether that is through worship, through the message, or just simply connecting and serving one another. If you have a prayer need today, please come right over. Our prayer team is over here. They are ready to partner with you in prayer. They can show you a scripture that you can be standing on, that you can meditate on and know the promises of God and the situation in your life. If you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, they can walk you through that prayer as well. Um, and I just want to commission you in Ephesians 3 on your way out. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly more than all we could ask or think according to the power at work in us. May God be with you. Go with God from this place. You've been commissioned to be a light unto the world and to the people around you. Amen. Enjoy Amen. your day. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Go, boy.